Hello and welcome to The Matt Lagore Show. On The Matt Lagore Show, we like to talk about being an entrepreneur, about business, inspiration, purpose, uh, things that are a little bit more inspiring in life, uh, things that are a little bit more, have a little more value. And uh, that was one of the things I was thinking about uh, when I was getting ready to do the show was about value, uh, the kind of value you know you place on yourself. We all have uh, a feeling of what we're worth, right? You go for a job and you say, well, you know, I want to make so much money or, you know, you say to yourself, I want to make so much money this year. You know, we put values on ourselves. Uh, but one of the mistakes you can make is you can put too much value on yourself or not enough. And I was thinking of a story about a man named Edwin Barnes. And uh, Edwin Barnes was um, a man who kind of idolized Thomas Edison and he wanted to be his partner more than anything when he was young. So he had, uh, he had three problems though. Number one, he didn't know Thomas Edison and Thomas Edison didn't know him. Number two, he was very poor. He came from poverty. And number three, he had nothing of value to offer Thomas Edison, you know, the father of electricity, the great inventor. So, but that didn't stop him. He got on a train, he went to New Jersey, and he introduced himself to Thomas Edison. And he said, Mr. Edison, I want to work with you. And Mr. Edison looked at him and he said uh, that he saw a, a, a measure of determination in his face that was unusual. And he said to him, he said, I would like to work with you too. Here you go. Here's a broom. Get started today. Now, a lot of people might have been very insulted by that. And been like, you know how far I traveled, you know, I have a lot of good ideas, but not Mr. Barnes. Mr. Barnes took the broom and went to work because he knew that it was better to be in the company of Thomas Edison than not at all. And he waited, and he waited for what? An opportunity. An opportunity arose. Thomas Edison had created a thing called the dictation machine, and he wanted his sales force to go out and sell it, and his sales force thought it was stupid, and they didn't want to sell it because they didn't think it had any value. But Barnes, on the other hand, saw the value and he asked permission to sell it. And what ended up happening was he sold thousands. And he was so successful that Edison came to him and said, I want you to be in charge nationally to sell this. And Barnes went on to become a multimillionaire working with Thomas Edison, became his partner. And then a term was created. Uh, uh, it was called Created by Edison and Installed by Barnes. And that was a very famous slogan for, for the day and the era. So I've always been impressed with that kind of story. Now, I've never done anything like that myself. I've never been able to put myself in a position to do something like that. Maybe I haven't been humble enough or I didn't have the, uh, maybe I just didn't have the, the, the foresight to see that. But I do know somebody who did. And that is my guest today, Mr. Felix Toronto. Welcome to the show, Felix. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Felix is a longtime friend, good friend, and also quite the entrepreneur. Now, Felix, uh, first of all, before I go any further, just why don't you tell us what your business is and uh, how we can get in touch with you. I wash cars for a living. Okay. Um, no glory. I just enjoy what I do. Mm -hmm. uh, it's King Triton Car Care in Wilmington, Triton Wash in Salem, Mass, and Wash World in Needham. Right. Okay. Well, and what's the website? www.tritonwash.com. Okay. And uh, so the car wash, what, what, what's the locations? Uh, I know they're in Wilmington, but what's the location? 70 TV place uh, right behind Muzzy Motors, Muzzy Ford and Chevy. Um, exit 19B up 128. Yep. Wilmington is um, 581 Main Street mm -hmm. in, uh, on, in Wilmington. And Salem is Highland Avenue in Salem, right across the street from the Home Depot. Right. Okay. And uh, how long have you been in the car wash business? Uh, a lot longer than it feels like. Uh, 18 years. 18 years. Wow. That's a... It's a Amazing, it's gone by so quickly. Now, if it would be okay, I would like to um, tell the people watching my first meeting with you and what I saw, if that's okay with go, you. Go right ahead. Okay. So when I first met Felix, Felix called me and I was in the dent business and Felix said, hey, I'm working down at uh, Muzzy Motors and we're looking for a dent guy. I'd like you to come down and uh, we'll talk and maybe we can do some business. I'm a, I'm a, new, I'm a new manager here. Oh, okay. Now, I'm thinking manager, sales manager, general sales manager. Now, what Felix had was basically the worst management job in the dealership. It paid the least, and it had the absolute worst location. You were underneath the underneath part of the dealership. 
I was in the basement. There's only one way. Is out. <laughs> <laughs> now, my first impression was, wow, uh, obviously, this guy's done something very wrong, and he's hiding from the cops. But, you know, hey, none of my business. He's a nice guy. None of my business, you know. But what really what was happening was you took a position working there. Um, you took, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of being facetious, and I'm, I'm making some jokes. But really what I said wasn't far from the truth, though, either, was it? No, no, not not at all. Yeah. So you you um, were humble enough. I don't know if I could have done it to take that kind of lowly position um, for opportunity. Now, I don't know that you thought you were going to build it into a car wash business at that moment, but you did you have some kind of idea what you wanted to do when you took that job? Um, to be honest with you, no. Um, I went into that position uh, more of. I actually stumbled into it. Um, a friend of mine went and purchased a car from them. Uh, the Camaranos and the Muzzies have always taken care of anyone that brought there to buy a vehicle. Uh, and when they delivered the vehicle, it just wasn't to my standard. Yeah. And I spoke to um, them, and they told me they were having problems in the detail shop. 20 years prior to that, 15 years prior to that, I was detailing vehicles, and I said, I'll come in, I'll run the shop. Mm -hmm. uh, I was looking for a position, and uh, I went for it. So the position uh, I went for was taking over their, bought their detail shop, detailing their cars, and, and uh, for the delivery. Yeah. Um, made myself a fancy title of delivery manager. <laughs> Worked out nice. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and then started delivering the cars. And then when their car wash um, site came available. Oh, wait, before you say that, okay, because th th this is an important part of the story, to the view in, like, so you took this job, all right, opening, hey, why not, right? You were kind of between, you were in like a career shift, right? Yeah, you could say I was in a career shift. There was certain things in my life that uh, actually did humble me, mm -hmm. um, and I wasn't afraid to work with my hands. Uh, yeah. I was always raised with the, um, the saying, dirty hands make clean money. Mm -hmm. um, as long as you work an honest day's work for an honest day's pay, doesn't matter what you do. Um, you could do any job at all as long as you do it honestly and hard. Yeah, and yeah. earn your money. And and you had a that was a, a very consuming job. You put your all into it. I remember watching oh, yeah. you and, and just saying, you know, why? I mean, honestly, I was looking at you going, why? Why is he doing this? I mean, he's not making you didn't any look money. You said it to me. <laughs> <laughs> I, did. <laughs> I did say it to you. Why? All right. And you said, oh, I see opportunity. Uh -huh. And, you know, at that point in my life, I, I just couldn't see what you were talking about. Now, the Cameranos, very good people. They were good to you. Uh, they are good to you. They came up to you because they saw that you were really like over, you were an overachiever in a really underachieving position. All right. And didn't they say to you, hey, you know, what can we do to, uh, to, uh, to, to keep you here? Right. Am I right? Did they yes. Say? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then, and then you, had your ear to the ground, so to speak, like like Edwin Barnes, you were waiting for your opportunity. And what what had you kind of heard through the uh, grapevine? Uh, I heard that the property behind them, which was a car wash that they leased out for many years, uh, was the lease was running out, and the people were thinking of getting out, and some was going in. And I thought of the opportunity to take it over, mm -hmm. um, and brought it to them, and the Cameranos and. Muzzy, uh, Fred Muzzy, who's a phenomenal gentleman, um, had trust and faith in me mm -hmm. uh, in the position to take it over. Mm -hmm. um, and from then on, it's 20 years later. Yeah. No, and nobody, even the Cameranos at that point, knew like how successful it was going to no, be. No, not at all. Because not the, even a little the bit. car wash that was there was, was not. It was no. It was, it was antiquated. Absolutely. Uh, it was a mess. And, and so... Did, did you were kind of like were you just willing to like take over the antiquated car wash or no you, no you wanted no. to upgrade it and everything absolutely yeah absolutely. and so they were willing to to back you absolutely that. yeah so that's that's a lot of they had a lot of faith in you yeah it did that was like there was a lot of faith in you and that was a it was a very like uh it was a marriage that worked out very well yeah, yeah. um there was a lot in this real in a relationship there has to be trust mm -hmm. and the trust is endless between the cameranos and myself and muzzy yeah um and so the trust was it was 100 percent complete trust yeah um trust in me taking over this new venture uh and me trusting them um to actually 
um, look after me and see my vision. Follow through on their yeah. on their commitment, right? Correct. Right. Yes. Right. So okay. So I remember that. So they they break ground on it. You build the cars. Then after it was successful, uh, you got you you decide they you and the Camaranos decided expansion, right? Well, it was it was the biggest um, idea was me uh, because. I was hungry, mm-hmm. still hungry. Um, once you lose that hunger, you get content, and once content settles in, um, not to be so dramatic, it's death. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You, you, the, the whole thing of keeping yourself successful, keeping yourself young and moving is the achievements of goals and trying new things. Uh, so I wasn't ready to just operate one facility and, and be content. Mm-hmm. Uh, so... I started looking into other facilities, um, and our uh, supplier, Auto Wash Maintenance out of Malden, um, called me up and said, there's a place available. Um, I looked at it, um, and that was the Wilmington location, yeah. and I brought it to the table, told them what I wanted to do, how I wanted to do it, what the investment was going to take, when do I, uh, what kind of return I think we're going to take back from it, and boom, we did it again. Yeah. And from there, we did another location, another location. Mm-hmm. And then at one point in time, um, the relationship was so strong and so sound um, that I ended up buying Wilmington out completely myself, mm-hmm. land, business, and everything else, and still being the operator of the other two facilities itself. Yeah. So you're, and they're mine. So you operate Needham and uh, Salem. Salem, yep. And then your personal car wash is King Triton Car Wash in Wilmington. Wilmington. Yeah. Correct. A beautiful facility too, by the way. Thank you very much. You know, there's something you do, like, there's, there, I've been to other car washes, all right? They wash the car. You go through, it comes out, it's clean, all right? Um, it, if you're getting something else done, maybe they do a clean wash and windows. You sit in the waiting room and it's got some chairs and maybe a TV. Your car wash has all the details, like, to the max, there's nice music playing all the time. Maybe some Frank Sinatra. You go in the waiting room. It's comfortable. There's a coffee machine. You know, make a coffee. Uh, in Needham, there's a is a fish tank still there? Oh yeah, the fish yeah. tank still there. Beautiful fish, fish, fish tank. tank. Yeah. I mean, that costs money to do all that yeah. to put all those extra things in there. Uh, th- there's the beautiful garden you have. You know, lots of lo- lots of like a. Uh, you know, the, the fountain. It's just some really nice extras that you, you did. Is that just you? Is that you as a person? Is that like an expression of you, all that extra stuff? Or do you, is there a, uh, you know, a method to your madness? Customer service. Mm-hmm. Um, you want to, my whole attitude of business is you want to go someplace that you can see reinvest what you put into it. So mm-hmm. if, if a customer is putting, buying um, washes, I want them to see that I'm reinvesting their money. Yeah. That I'm not just taking it and scrolling it away for a rainy day, which mm-hmm. actually the car wash industry, that was um, really the trend. Uh, generations have changed, and now the, the car wash industries are going more customer service. But when yeah. I started 20 years ago, it was um, kind of getting obsolete. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I, that's why I wanted to make customers to be able to come in, be comfortable, and see what we can do for them. And I always wanted the customers and all my customers to come into all my facilities and feel that it's their car wash. Mm -hmm. So when they tell a customer word of mouth, because my father always told me, Ray's, that the best advertisement is word of mouth. Mm -hmm. So when he, when a customer would come in, I want them to leave and say to their friends, oh, my car wash is up the street. My car wash is Wilmington. My car wash is in Needham. My car wash gives a 96 hour guarantee. Mm -hmm. My car wash gives a free birthday wash. Oh, my car wash. I want them to have a sense of ownership Mm -hmm. when they come to my facilities. That's nice. That's nice. Well, it definitely feels that way. You know, thank you. Um, You know, the thing I like the best is the towel dry at the end. That just nails it. Like your car comes out of there. Why don't you take towel dry everything off? I mean, that's a big extra. Like, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, you got, at sometimes you got like four guys out there. On oh, a- absolutely. It, it's uh, uh, on a um, on a cost standpoint, it's astronomical. Um, when I got into the industry, there was very few people actually towel drying anymore. Mm-hmm. It was just an expense. Yeah. Um, I thought it was necessary. 
uh, because it's actually not only just to dry the car off and make sure it has, doesn't dry, drive away with any spots. Everybody hates spots yeah, yeah. hanging out after they wash the car. It's actually my last line of customer service. Mm -hmm. So uh, because I'm, I'm very, very determined to provide customer service. Everyone has bad days. Everyone has rough days. So if my customer, my cashier, uh, didn't meet your standard of customer service, um, then there's my gen two gentlemen inside prepping your car, washing the front, washing the back, and sending you on your way, so giving you a nice thank you, neutral no breaks, and send you on your way. Mm -hmm. If they don't reach a certain standard, that you en exit the tunnel, I have my towel dryers. And my towel dryers at the end is going to towel dry your car, meet you at your window, say thank you. And if there's any concerns, you're not happy with the car wash, you didn't get your wash, you have any questions, they have all the power to send you right around again and wash your car again. Mm -hmm. uh, they, you don't have to go to a manager. They can do it right there and say, you know what, bring your car around. And they, they can inspect your car. If they wash your car and they know you've got a certain wash and your wheels are still dirty, they'll actually tell you, why don't you go around again and wash it again? So I want that sense of customer service from end to end. Mm -hmm. Not for the customer, just all of a sudden, the person pushes the button in the tunnel, you go in and all of a sudden, you're no longer a customer. Well, you have 100 foot feet of tunnel that you're still a customer. When you exit, you're still a customer. Yeah, yeah. well that's great because that's like you got all those layers there to protect your customer and protect your business too, you know? Absolutely. It makes a big difference. I mean, I'm not just saying this because you're my friend. It really is the best car wash. Like Thank the you. car comes out the cleanest. You know, my wife, you know, I have to tell her to wash her car sometime, but she always says, oh, it looks so good. It always looks so good when it comes out. I have out to of tell my wife. She doesn't, have to, <laughs> she doesn't pay for it. <laughs> so, um, how many people uh, are you employing? I, I mean, how many people in the three car washes? Like, Because, I mean, this is important. Like, you're affecting people's lives. It's not just like you running the car wash, but you're like giving good jobs out to people. And one thing I've noticed is people stay with you for a long time because you're taking care of them. You make them work, but you take care of them well, too. It's a cliche. Um, it's a cliche you always hear with family, with family, and we are yeah. uh, because we impact. Uh, all of us impact each other's lives at work. Mm -hmm. um, you work with somebody for so many years, you know their family, you know their kids. You watch their kids grow up, and they watch your kids grow up. So, I mean, if there's a concern, they know I'm, I'm there. If I have a concern, I can go directly to them. And I'm very fortunate to have uh, um, a crew of guys that have been with me since I started, yeah. and they yeah. haven't left. And we've grown together, we've grown the business together, and they know what I expect. And so when we bring any new employees in, they actually can relay my message and I don't have to because yeah. they know this is the way we do it. This mm -hmm. is how you have to, it's customer service, opening the doors, closing the doors, making sure the door jams are clean. When we're doing our express details where we do the wash, the vacuum window all while you wait, make sure you deliver the car with the door open, going to get the customer. Thank you very much. Thank yous are the most important thing. That's old school right yeah. there. That's old school. You love old school. Yeah, you know, I'm a little it, too old school. <laughs> but it shows, though, you know. So, you know, uh, all these years I've known you, uh, almost 20 years, you, you know, you started there at the bottom. Very impressive to watch, you know. And I always tell people about it. It's one of the best uh, displays of, like, entrepreneurism and, uh, that I've ever seen, you know. Uh, you've affected so many people, you know. I mean, is there over 100 people that work in the three car washes? Um, no, I mean, at times it'll get up there with certain seasons, they get yeah. more. Uh, we have winter help that yeah. comes in that it's just a huge influx. And then the summertime, it comes down because our yeah. slower seasons in the summer. Yeah. Uh, but it, it's, uh, it gets up there, but not that high. But so, you know, 50 plus. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. That, that's a lot. Absolutely. Of, so uh, I mean, on, a norm, it's, on a norm, it's 50. Yeah. So, I mean, you went from you and a couple of guys vacuuming cars to, you know, in a basement, you can in, say it, in a, in in a, a, dungeon, in a dungeon with dingy <laughs> lights, with no heat, in the middle of the winter. It was always dark, <laughs> always damp, and always like, there was like a level of humidity uh, in there that never changed all the time. And you had those two uh, like 1960s metal desks desk. side by side, and you're like, I remember, I met, come on, I want to come to my office. I want to see the chair with missing the wheels. <laughs> you know, like, oh, you're rocking in that chair. And you had a phone. Was it a dial phone? Uh, or, did, no, or, no, no, no. It was still an extension phone. It was an extension yeah, phone. It yeah. wasn't like an old extension phone. Was yeah. it a legit yeah, phone? Yeah, yeah. All it, right. was, it was the, a decent phone. The desks and the chairs and everything were like, 
50 years old. <laughs> but, but, you know, impressive, impressive. And, you know, and then you change the lives of people around, you know, good jobs. And, like, you know, Anthony's been with you, you know, for 18 years, you know. Um, but then along the way, somewhere along the way, if that wasn't enough, you took on all that. You and your wife decided it was going to be a good idea. Let's have three kids, one right after another. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. That's the way to do it. Get it out of the way. How old's the oldest? 18. 18 and the youngest? Uh, 15. 15. Well, soon to be 16. So 16. 16, 17, 18. I mean, you just, it was one right after yeah. another. And I, I, again, looking at you going, wow. Man, what is he doing? You know, but you knew what you were doing. Oh, I have a big plan. I, I want to keep going so then I can get staff. Okay? <laughs> well, you keep got, the cost down. Make everybody work. You got three managers. <laughs> <laughs> keep it in the family like that. That's good. So, you know, but you have a, you have a, a lovely family, too. Yes. You know? And, you know, but you did it at the same time, like running the businesses. You didn't neglect your family. You weren't a guy that was on the road and traveling. I mean, you worked a lot, but, you know, you, you lived in Waltham and, you know, you were only, you know, half an hour from any, any location. I, I, you have to put in hours. Like anyone yeah. says 40 hours is a full-time job, that's a part-time job. Mm -hmm. If you want to be successful in anything you do, anything you do, it's a minimum of 50, 60 hours a week. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's a full-time job. That's a regular job, yeah. 50, 60 hours a week. Yeah. If you want to punch a clock, and that's, there's nothing wrong with punching a clock, mm -hmm. but if you want to achieve something and make goals and, and your expectations are high out of life, then you have to make sacrifices. I did make sacrifices, and I did not see my family a lo as much. However, I always ate dinner at home. Yeah. It, if it was not at my parents' house, it was with my my, and my, my kids and family would go over or it would be at home and my wife would wait to have dinner so we would have dinner at nine o'clock at night and mm -hmm. we still do it to this day we have dinner at nine o'clock at night because we have dinner together as a family so That's I mean nice. it's it's yes it's uh, we try to keep the family values together but sometimes eating dinner at nine o'clock at night is what you have to do to keep those family <laughs> values together well those are the sacrifices you make so now I want to ask you a question like overall like when you first took that job uh, 20, uh, 18, 20 years ago, um, you, you had a purpose, right? You had purpose. Like there was purpose in your life, and that was you were looking for opportunity. So like what was your purpose, though, at that point in your life? Uh, it's, it's hard to um, put one word of what my idea of a purpose of life was. Um, I enjoyed what I did. And that was half the battle. If you can get out of bed and and go to work and enjoy what you do, mm -hmm. I mean, you're ahead yeah. in life. Yeah. Um, so, and uh, once I started in the car wash business uh, and bring in the customer service end of it, because I've always been in the customer service end of the business of, of work, um, it really sparked a fire that I wanted to keep doing it and I wanted to keep going. And so that's how I ended up from one to another, to another. Yeah, okay. Um, and like you mentioned, it, you, know, you get up in the morning and you want to do it. I think if you wake up in the morning and you're depressed and, and unhappy, you probably got to look at, like, maybe you got to reevaluate your purpose, you know, because uh, it, it's hard to get up when you don't have a good purpose. Like, so now, I mean, people could say, like, well, you made it now, you know, you did it, you got it all around. Do you still have purpose? Like, do you have new vision, new ideas? There's always, always new ideas, always new vision. I mean, I'm... Uh, almost 50 years old and, and I am a dinosaur. Mm -hmm. um, I am a dinosaur in social media. I am a dinosaur in, you know, all this um, face what, chat, snap book stuff. You're gonna uh, have your Facebook page any yeah, day now, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I am, I am, I am, I'm coming into the 21st century, I am. Any day. Uh, with all of, <laughs> developing all of it, but it took that long to actually start something new, to learn something. Um, and it, it's a direction that I have to take in, take and I'm, um, I'm excited about it yeah um, with the social media end of it mm -hmm. so uh, but like I said everyone has their bad days where you're like ah, I just don't want to get out of bed and mm -hmm. everyone has their bad weeks and and they get into a slump mm -hmm. uh, it's always farting it's finding that little something that re-sparks it mm -hmm. yeah so. so everybody has their down days right everybody has a down no matter days. how successful you are you always have your down days sure. all right well we're getting close to the end of the show um, let's just Again, give the locations again. Where are the locations? Um, one's Wash World in Needham, yep. behind Muzzy Motors, exit yep. 19B off 128, TV Place. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, the other location is 581 Main Street in Wilmington. That's mm -hmm. King Triton Car Care. Mm -hmm. And then the other one is on Highland Avenue in Salem. Salem. And uh, so at the uh, locations, car wash, what else? Car wash express details. If you want to come in, get your wash, vacuum, windows, door jams, all while you wait, and express carpet shampoo, express wax, we offer it all while you wait. You come in, have a cup of coffee, watch TV. Uh, we have Wi-Fi go on the internet and we'll take care of your vehicle mm -hmm. while you wait. We also have full details where they take all day long. We will take your car, shampoo, steam clean, deodorized, scotch guard, leather conditions and softeners, the vents, the door jams, then go out to the outside, clay wash it, compound it, machine glaze it and make it look like a brand new car. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. anything you need for the beauty of your car, we'll take care of. All right. We're making the world better one beautiful car at a time. One car at a time. <laughs> Changing the world one car at a time. Now, in Salem and in Wilmington, you do have uh, self-service bays, too. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. Self-service bays. Are, and uh, Wilmington has opened up 24 hours a day for the self-service bay. We also have a touchless wash, which yeah. is a touchless automatic with a high pressure. Goes around your vehicle. Mm -hmm. That's open 24 hours. Salem has self-serve bays. Uh, they're open until 9 o'clock at night, yeah. where you come in and you can wash the vehicle yourself. Nice. All right. All right, Felix. Well, it's great having you on the show. Great being on the show. One of my best guests so far. And uh, so we'll see you uh, at the car wash, right? Absolutely. Come and see me. All right. Okay. Well, we want to thank you for watching the Matt Lagore Show. We will be back again soon with another guest. So until then, we'll see you next time.